I wouldn't necessarily call this a port at this point. They really overhauled a lot of it, from the character designs to the backgrounds. Gameplay is still like this, though. Big! Big! Are those cowboys? Those are big cowboys. Happy Pride, everybody. Live from Austin, Texas, where we're hosting a showdown between Vic Tokai and Tommy Treko. It's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hello, Alex. Tommy Treko, huh? Yeah, I assume that's his name. Tom I... or Tommy or uh, Toddland. I, I have so many questions about good old Tom Tom here. <laughs> Tom Tom Club, yeah. <laughs> Tom Tom Treko. Oh boy. Oh boy, we have a show for you tonight. We do. My brain is about uh, 60% ready for this, so mm -hmm. that's fine. That's that's okay, because I only need 60% of a brain to cover mid-tier Sega Genesis publishers. One of my favorite things ever. We're actually going to cover this tonight. We have a showdown between two uh, known but not necessarily famous Sega Genesis publishers, and the theme tonight is we have to decide a winner. Only one can survive. The other one, dead forever. So pick a team, stick behind it, and uh, root for them. Yeah, pick a side. Because the loser dies. Wait, hold on. I need a gun. Okay, so real quick, before we get started, I want to thank some folks. Thank you, Refurb, for the 11-month resub, and thank you very much to Arpiga for the 21 months resub. Uh, Arpiga says, ah, oh, yeah, Vic Tokai. Yep. Mm -hmm. We got some Vic Tokai fans in here already. We got some Treko fans, too. Y'all are out there. You don't know you exist yet, but after this stream, you may exist. Ooh, and thank you for... Uh, thank you to Beatitude for Gains for the 15-month resub. Do appreciate that. Nice. Thank you all. Right. Much appreciated. Okay, should we get this started? Yeah. So, we took a poll to our patrons. We asked them, what kind of Sega Genesis publisher spotlight do you want? These were all companies with smallish catalogs, except for Flying Edge, which had a big enough catalog to support its own stream. But I think people chose the right one. Vic Tokai, Treco, good stuff, good mm -hmm. stuff. These other companies I'd like to cover eventually, but the people have spoken, and what they want is Treco versus Vic Tokai. Hey, thank you to... Oh. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, so I was going to read. Uh, thank you, Fizzy Rabbit VR, for the 200 bits. Thus commences another adventure of dirt, wheels, and gumption. Those are our favorite things. Mm -hmm. Yes. All those I things. Love dirt. And more tonight mm -hmm. on Retro Pals. Okay, so we're going to start off with, let's say, Treco. You know Treco, right? They're an extremely famous company, an extremely rich one nowadays. Wait, what? Yeah, but way back when, they were just a Sega Genesis publisher who brought fewer than a dozen games to market. Some of them localizations, uh, actually all of them localizations, mm -hmm. but they, they had an interesting batch. Treco, like many companies we've covered before on Sega Genesis, went by an alias because they were afraid of reprisals from Nintendo of America. Uh, Nintendo famously was uh, had a tight grip over the U.S. market. It punished people who published games on other systems by short-stocking them, by being like, oh, you published a game on Genesis? Well... I guess we can't afford that second shipment of GoGo 13 after all. <laughs> hmm. What a shame. Holy shit. So Treco went under a pseudonym mm -hmm. because they were on NES, where they published games under the name American Sammy. I know what American Sammy does. Games. Yes. Wow. Many, many years later, ironically, Sammy would purchase Sega wholesale. So it's kind of amusing that they had this really low profile kind of scared of Nintendo uh, appearance on Sega Genesis. Because nowadays, they don't got to be afraid of nobody. Yeah, wow. <laughs> but wow. way back in 1991, or rather, October 1st, 1990, they brought their very first game to the United States. It was a game called Atomic Robo Kid. Oh, and real quick, thank you so very much to Fidget for the 100 bits. Fidget wishes, wishes us a happy Pride Month. Happy nice, Pride. Thank you. Happy, happy Pride, Pride, everybody. Bubblin, thank you for thank you for knowing the American Sammy website circa 2000. <laughs> oh, good. Someone else remembers good. What does American Sammy do? Games. Games. Love that website. Starter up. 
1990, pretty early in the Sega Genesis lifespan. They had a successful Christmas of 89. And now here comes Atomic Robo Kid. Ported for home consoles from the UPL arcade original. Interestingly, a lot of these ports are pretty different compared to uh, the arcade original. I think this one is a little bit more faithful than, say, the PC Engine version, which was called Atomic Robo Kid Special, mm -hmm. to indicate that it's uh, different it's and special. special. <laughs> There's Treco. Look at that logo. Hey, I love that logo. It looks like it looks like a cup brand from 1982. <laughs> it kind of does, yeah. Wait, it just starts like this? Yeah, it just starts like this. Okay. So this is a game where you're a robo kid. You got various items and weapons that can be upgraded over the course of gameplay. Music here, you'll notice, is a little bit shrill. Not making the best use of the Genesis hardware, but I've heard worse. However, there's, there's trouble lurking in the wings. Because apparently the people who developed this port was none other than Micronix. Nope. No, no. Um, thank I want to go on record and say this is one of the best Micronics games, and go ahead. Uh, thank you, Melting Swatches. 13-month resub. Uh-oh, 13 months. Hope y'all are doing well. We are. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you for the unlucky God. months. We'll deal with it somehow. This weapon's interesting. You have to push in a direction to aim it, but it gives you a big old explosion. Yeah, and this is where the game is faithful to the arcade game, because you die in one hit. Ooh. Atomic Robo Kid Special on PC Engine gave you a life bar, I believe. So if you want a more forgiving experience, maybe that's the one you want to play. But what I like about this is the way the game looks. It has a real UPL aesthetic, if you know what I mean. Yes! Yes, it does! If you're familiar with games like Mutant Knight and, to a lesser extent, uh, Ninja Kid, you'll know this style right away. This is very UPL. It's got a kind of grungy look to it, you know? Sort of weird alien appendages just coming out of the walls. Oh, this track sucks. Listen to this. Wow, this is really bad. Yeah, but it's a game where you can fly, and when you go on the ground, you have a walking animation. How can you not like that? This is really bad. I'm impressed. Hey, thank you so much for the raid, Wife City. Oh, nice. Welcome aboard, uh, folks from Wife City. We're playing uh, Atomic Robo Kid for our Treco uh, Victor Kai Super Showcase. I was just telling Alex before the show about the uh, many discussions you had in your channel this oh, afternoon. Oh, God, Dan, please don't. We won't no. continue those. Okay, thank Hope you. Hope you had fun with uh, Metroid Fusion, though. <laughs> I was like, ah, good, it's not just my chat who does this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess, oh yeah, I guess y'all are tourists from Wife City. Beautiful Wife City. I bet it's great during Pride Month. Oh yeah, totally. Mm. God damn it, this game is hard. I have beaten it, though, because this game has generous checkpoints. The levels are pretty short, but there's a lot of them. There's something like 20-something, so you'll be playing this for like an hour before you beat it. There's some neat screen-filling bosses. For this being a Micronics game, this actually looks and performs pretty well. Uh, the music is a bit of a letdown, though. Yeah, it's not so good. But so far, in terms of openers, you could go a lot worse than Atomic Robo Kid. So a strong start for Treco. Treco fans, you got a you got a real one here. <laughs> what other this what other stream would describe Atomic Robo Kid as a real one? I mean he is, look at him. I'm right though. You can't he's, say I'm wrong. He's a little freak and he's doing it his own way. I love him. And now he's dead. Look where it got him. The fate of all little freaks. Next up. We had to wait six months till June of 1991 when we played, or rather when Treco released their next game, Street Smart. <laughs> we covered this one extremely recently, so we won't be uh, playing much of this. But last time we covered this, we mentioned that this game had a fully developed prototype version that was extremely faithful to the arcade version. Uh, the problem was the arcade game sucks, <laughs> so they had to redo it from scratch, making a... Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call this a port at this point. They really overhauled a lot of it, from the character designs to the backgrounds. Gameplay is still like this, though. Big! Big! Are those cowboys? Those are big cowboys. Happy Pride, everybody. <sighs> Apparently one of the songs in this game was later reused in Fatal Fury, because it's from a lot of the same developers at SNK. Is a prototypical brawler from SNK before that would become their their big thing with King of Fighters and all. 
They call themselves, oh, American Trico. That's so good. Mm -hmm. American Treco, just Treco. like yeah. American Sammy. That's so Old good. Old habits die hard. So everything about this game sucks. The gameplay, the graphics, uh, they're okay. The the cover art, though, is a true sight to behold if you've never seen it. It is. Should I, should I put show to the chat? If you like. Okay, hold on. It'll take me a second. Truly one of the ugliest pieces of American box art. Hey, I got this guy. I got him in a loop. Oh, nice. Hold on. I'm just getting it started, getting loaded here for y'all. And when you win a fight in this game, you get to upgrade your character. So it's got arcade uh, RPG elements. And I think you can also bet against yourself, or was that the prototype version? That's us. We've seen better days. Wow. The Treco. The Treco. I gotta start calling it Treco. I keep forgetting. This is actually Ryo from Art of Fighting, did you know? Look at I him. did not know. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm putting this over the chat, but uh, here you go, folks. Here is the beautiful cover art. I'm going to bet on the enemy. Street smart. I'm going to bet uh, $10,000. Look at that. Look at that. Look at look at all. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm zooming it into the good parts. It's good. I, w I wish I could draw like that. I want to make a bunch of fake Sega Genesis covers. I like I like the the hold on. I'm cropping it to my favorite part. The guy's face, yeah, it's really good, but this this random guy going ass over tea kettle. Yeah, that guy's good. Is my absolute favorite. There's a lot of uh, lower tier fighting games on Sega Genesis. We're actually going to see a couple of them tonight. Hi. But. Say, if you were putting this next to Kageki, I'm sorry, I'm always going to pick Kageki no matter what. Kageki is amusing, and it has a, a strategy to it. You can actually one credit clear the game once you get used to it. This game, I don't know if there is a strategy. The hit detection is really loose. You can't really reliably punch a guy, but they can reliably punch you. Did I make a convincing fight there? Because I bet against myself. <laughs> Oh, no, I tried really hard in the street fight, but I guess I just couldn't win. Better give me $20,000. Sure, the game's over, but I'm rich. Isn't that what matters? It is. Listen, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. It's who gets all the money at the end. True, true. Pete Rose rules. <laughs> Pete Rose is street smart. <laughs> all right, our next game. What's next, Alex? That would be Twin Cobra. Ooh. Also in June of 1991, you could pick up a copy of Twin Cobra. Now, the final version of this game was actually published by Sega, but it mentions Treco on the box art, and I believe the title screen as well, so maybe this is a co-production. Like, Sega was all like, oh, Treco, please help us. We don't have enough resources. <laughs> You're so good and strong, Treco. Yeah, look at that. American Treco. And Toa Plan which is usually spelled as one word. Yep, this is from the people who made Truxton, people who made Zero Wing, and also these various helicopter games, which seem very similar to me. Boy, they sure ported a lot of Toa Plan games to Mega Drive. There was this, Twin Hawk, Truxton. Uh, what's my favorite one? Fire Shark. Fire Shark is very good. Also known as Same 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 in Japan, or Shark Shark Shark. Oh, okay. Did you know that that title is in reference to the film Tora Tora Tora? Now you do. I sure do. Wow. I don't know what to do with this information. I don't like having this information. Yeah, it's very useful. Uh, is Toa Plan supposed to usually be two words or one word? That's so unusual. It's. I've only ever seen it as one word, but here, uh, first of all, they actually mentioned the developer, which none of these other games did. I don't remember seeing Toa Plan on Truxton or anything. So it was still kind of early days, and I don't think anybody would have really known the name, because all their arcade games were distributed by others here in the States. I want to say this one, or another game in the series, was from Taito. They also got Romstar in on it. Good old Romstar. So you couldn't really establish a shooter brand that you liked <laughs> in the States in the early 90s, because they were all from different publishers. Unless you happen to get to the end and you were all like, ah, yes. M. Ozaki. This is a true M. Ozaki joint. That is an example name. I don't know actually what a Toa Plan developer is named. Anyway, this one's good. It's good. It kind of lacks whatever makes Truxton really good. And it's no Fire Shark, in my opinion. An interesting one to check out is 
What was that one called? Twin Hawk. In Japan, known as Dyson Poo. That one was neat because you control an airplane and it's the only airplane in the game. You fight against nothing but tanks and, like, trucks and shit. I'm slowly learning to distinguish the uh, Toa Plan shmups so that the shmups forum won't laugh, me, laugh at me again. I feel bad, but they all just... A lot of shmups blend together for me. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. When you think of this one, you'll be like, what's the one with the helicopter that shoots other helicopters? Oh, wait, that's like 20 games. Yeah, someone in chat was mentioning uh, this parentheses helicopter game is totally parentheses adjective. Yeah, this <laughs> is... Uh... It's fine. I would put it somewhere in between Twin Hawk and Truxton. So out of the 50 Toa Plan shmups, that's where it ranks on Sega Mega Drive. I like these weapons, though. I do! They look like... I like all the dipping Dots you're shooting. <laughs> it's ice cream of the future, damn it! You're just... You're making a very cold situation for all these tanks. Like, gumming, gumming up the works. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, no, it's checkpoint-based. I hate that. Then again, you know, pretty much all Toa Plan shmups are like that. Not checkpoint, Stan? Not me. I'm like, resume where I left off. Let me just continue through the game. Let me credit feed. I'm with you. I'm with you there. I, I, I agree that the more money I have, the easier the game should be for me. Mm hmm It's just how the world works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like the bright orange tanks, too. Nice of them to paint them that neon color. They knew I was coming. Well, they wanted to make sure you could see them, you know. They're, they're, very, they're all about accessibility. They're like, listen... We believe in safety, so all of our weaponry, you know, huge, bright colors, reflective Shit. light. Well, the enemy won. That's unfortunate. Sorry, everybody. We're not going to win this battle. I have 17 credits? Cool. Holy shit. That's probably not enough for me to beat the game, honestly. Actually, fuck it. I'm going to beat this boss. Okay. I'm mad now. All right. Go, Danny. Go. Never mind. We're moving on to our next game. All right. Next game. Oh, it's an unreleased game. Oh, this one's interesting. So, in Japan, there's this game called Uchu Senkan Gomora, which is a port of another UPL arcade game. Believe it or not, it's really weird and grungy looking. I know that's a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, Treco, I don't think, ever officially announced this for release in the United States, but the ROM itself gives the actual story, because when you load this up, you don't get Uchu Senkan Gomora on a US Genesis console. What you get is Bioship Paladin, the unreleased localization. Isn't that cool? That is super cool. And if you hack into the ROM, there's apparently references to American Treco, so we can uh, surmise they were going to publish it. Even had the alternate title screen art and everything. It was, like, ready to go. That's, that's fucking fascinating. Mm -hmm. Real quick, uh, uh, Real Soviet Bear resubs 47 months in a row. Thank you so much. A real Soviet Bear says, Victor Kai made Psycho Fox for the Master System, which I think is the most overrated MS game, so I vote for Treco. Okay. Wow, holy crap. I can't believe you've turned on Psycho Fox like that. That's and, a That was a huge thing on uh, a Master System. And Sasquatchula says American Treco. Okay, I'm, <laughs> thank, I'm done. Thank you both. I'm, I'm done with this, this earth. Now, you know how many shoot 'em ups place you in these agile planes with tiny hitboxes that can just zoom across the screen? Well, what if, instead, your ship was a giant piece of shit that could only move, like, a pixel a second? Wow! This ship sucks ass! You ever think about that? That's a pretty unique uh, thing for a shmup. Look at this background! All these buildings got jumbled together like a mass of Legos or something. <laughs> wow, these buildings suck! And oh, when you get power-ups, you get even bigger! <laughs> Do you get slower? Because you see Yes, slower. you get slower. Wow! Now, what makes this game unique is you have this front-facing shot. Oh, you can get speed-ups, thank God. You got this front-facing shot in addition to this little crosshair you see in front of my ship. Mm -hmm. And by pushing the other button, you can move the crosshair around. Oh, And okay. that gives you an alternative weapon, which is something like ten times more powerful than your standard shot. That's, that's good. So essentially, you really want to become used to how this game plays with the whole crosshair system. Look how huge I am now! Oh, you're a huge piece of shit now. Oh, you suck. Oh. Jesus, I couldn't even avoid that. It's like driving a bus through a ravine. People calling you the SS Big Chungus. <laughs> you're very chunky. 
please, please, please destruct. Okay, good. That opened up the pathway. So despite the frame rate and the kind of uh, low color palette and the whole UPLness of the whole production, I think this game's kind of fascinating because they did something a little bit different than all, all the other, you know, helicopter shooters, the likes of which we just saw. And I can see why Treko would want to pick this up for release. Are there are there enough enemies on the screen? Hey! I think we could use a few more. All right, while the enemies spawn, I want to thank Shaxford for the 48 months, which is four whole years. Oh my god, you made it to four years. Thank you that's, so much. That's amazing. Shaxford, Shaxford says four years of maximum Blomby. <laughs> that is it. This is it. This is the most Blomby scene we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. it's so, oh four my god. Years. Can you imagine watching four years of this shit? I can't. <laughs> Some people can, though, and to them I'm grateful. I also like the whole biomechanical thing this game has going on. The stuff you fight looks vaguely like real-world animals, but all twisted and wrong. I think that's the UPL art style I just described. <laughs> kind of like real life, but twisted and wrong. Oh god. Did any other shoot 'em up try something like this, where you had a really slow but heavily armed ship, and instead of dodging, you had to focus on destroying things before they could encroach on your territory? Oh yeah, you got a charge up shot like our type. So yeah, you got options in terms of weapons and being able to fight back against the stuff in this game. Shame this one never came out over here. I think it could have found an audience. Then again, with stuff available at the time like Musha and again Fire Shark, maybe this couldn't have competed. We'll never know, though. Unless you're in the alternate dimension where Bioship Paladin came out for Genesis and was the most popular Genesis game. Let's see. Taizo says, My favorite UPL game is XX Mission, where the ending gives you your new mission to do literally anything else other than playing video games. It's not the dream, <laughs> huh? Yeah. That sounds like something UPL would say. I think it was UPL that put a bunch of weird messages at the end of their games. It was all like, stop playing this, quit playing video games. It was either them or Jalico who ended a lot of their arcade games with a message that says, hey, don't bully. Bullying's bad. That has to be my, my the kings and queens and, and wonder, wonderful people at, at, uh, at, at uh, Jalico. That's most likely Jalico, yeah. I love Jalico. Oh, look at that background there. That actually looks pretty nice. Hey, that is cool. And hey, I mean, which other shoot 'em up at this time put this many enemies on the screen? Like a couple seconds ago, there was like 50 sprites coming at me. This game's got heart. It's hard to love. It's even harder to play. But if you're a shoot 'em up fan who has to play everything, uh, this is one of them. Oh, look at this. I can attach little things to my ship. Babies. Sorry, I'm just thinking of Jalico just taking a very strong stance on bullying in mm -hmm. general. Just... Oh, I can't dodge that. I did. How are you dodging any of this with your ship? <laughs> <laughs> this giant piece of shit. You're like a probably controls like a space space boat. You're like a, a six inch like you're like a, a twelve foot sub. <laughs> <laughs> Subway presents Bioship Paladin. You're like a pastrami sandwich in an authentic deli. You're, you're huge. So I'm making a bold claim here, but I think so far, even though this was unreleased, this is technically the best Treco game we've seen so far. It's fascinating. They didn't they didn't go for the easy stuff here. Well, that's exactly what they did. With they went with the extremely conventional twin cobra instead of this. But they thought about it, and they it's the thought that counts. It. Yeah. Let's Next game. See. 81 Rambler donates 50 bits and says, Jalico says, don't believe fat, slow moving ships. Wrong. <laughs> no, I won't. I wouldn't. Yeah, don't do that. it. They're our friends. So, speaking of taking the easy way, the next game they published in February of 1992 was Task Force Harrier EX. Guess what? It's a schmup. A schmup. Sorry, the word got stuck in my mouth. You just got a little emotional because you love shmup so much. I'm American. I can't naturally pronounce the word shmup. Did we just get shot? I think so. Rude. Three times. Task Force Harrier EX. Who made this game originally? Is this a Data East production? Oh, we've seen this before, haven't we? Yeah. 
I remember it because I remember the thing between his legs. I remember that. You would remember that. Hey! Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> We're looking to cool the rising tension. Apparently there's some radical people in the world. It's sight we're set on the USA. No. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> that's why I remember this. Okay. Yeah. Memories are coming back. Sorry, the guy doing the waving seems really bored. Thank you, Invadoroid, for the four-month resub. They say wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Thank awful. you. We're all wiggling here. Ugh. Especially this guy. Oh, what a cool dude. She's pissed off. She knows. She's nasty. You don't typically see introductions like this in shoot 'em ups I guess they really must have wanted that intro in there, because that takes a not insignificant portion of ROM space. Let's get her started. Evasive tactics are advisable. <laughs> Avoid the bullets. Got it. All right, just readjust Aww, this. Oh, she waves. <laughs> all right, readjust the screen. Oh, sorry, sir. <laughs> so you should all be able to see it now. Yeah. So where does this rank in terms of the three shmups we've just seen back to back? This seems more in line with something like Twin Cobra. Not just in the fact that it's vertically scrolling, but just the flow of the action, you know. In this one, you got uh, surface to air, or rather, air to surface and air to air attacks. Notice how I have a little bomb that goes out in front of me, much like Xevious. I like the little bombs. I also want to credit this game for putting the shot and the bomb on one button, unlike a certain other shmup we played last night, which will go unnamed. Trevor McFur. Still mad about Trevor McFur. Yeah, what an asshole. I hated that. That was nothing. For those who missed it, we had a uh, collaboration with Bad Game Hall of Fame's cast last night, and our grand finale was Trevor McFur for the Atari Jaguar. So go check that out if you missed it. It was an unforgettable experience. You can hear me get disappointed in real time. Mm -hmm. I really had waited like for the right exact moment to see that game finally being played, and it fucking. Sucked. Yeah, I'm with you, Frappe. That game made me Trevor McFur furious. <laughs> GamePro called him Tre Trevor McFluff. Can you believe that? Game That's Pro fucked being, up. GamePro being critical. I do want to say, for as seemingly drab as Bioship Paladin was, this is even more so. This, I was going to say, yeah, this is like, chat's mentioning how gray it is. It's incredibly gray. This is America, by the way. This isn't the moon. <laughs> We're just flying over the, the grayest part of America. The gray belt, they call it. <laughs> oh, that's neat. By pushing the B button, you can change your formation. Oh. That's cool. Oh, look at this. You can have them oh, all spread that's out. cool. It's okay. You get some options while you play. Maybe they just felt like they only needed one shoot 'em up where you had these kinds of uh, options in terms of attack. Dang, good voice quality. I like this one. I think this is slightly better than Twin Cobra. Can't really say if it's better than Bioship Paladin. I'm a fan of that game. Let's see if the next level is any more colorful. Okay. <laughs> it's got the Waven Girl. That has to account for something. What the fuck? This is gray again. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love how gray it is. Well, a shoot 'em up doesn't need colors to be good, right? Nah, it's fine. Yeah. It's so weird. It's so very strange. But it plays good. It's not as sluggish as the previous two shoot 'em ups from them. And I think it's good. What do you have to say about that? I I agree. This looks fun. I mean, it's gray as hell, but it's not too flashy, so I like it. It's uh, this weapon. I like that really stupid weapon. No offense. To the <laughs> looks weapon. Really stupid. It does look really stupid. It looks like it looks like a macrame pattern. I'm sorry. <laughs> a little bit. All right, I think it's time for our next game. I think at this point Treko moved away from shoot 'em ups and tried to diversify a little bit. 
because their next game... Oh my freaking god, this is a big one. This one's huge. This is going to be the main deciding factor between Treko and Victoka, I think, because they published War Song. Holy crap. Megaton incoming. If you know your strategy RPGs, or SRPGs, you'll know this series as Langrisser. This is in fact Langrisser 1. Treko localized it and published it for the Sega Genesis in North America. Damn. This when, is a classy intro. Yeah. This was a time when literally, literally no one else would take a chance on a strategy RPG to release in America, but Treko did. And by doing so, they were kind of way ahead of the curve, because Langrisser turned out to be pretty huge. Okay, this version specifically has a reputation for being super difficult. Cool. Oh, it is. Now, I've only played the first couple chapters of this game, but it begins in a pretty interesting way. It begins with your castle under siege, and you gotta guide your dude out. Ooh. You get an overview, first of all. Usually you get to put down your troops, but here it's kind of decided for you. Oh yeah, if you're only familiar with the Langrisser art, because I think uh, it actually did have a famous artist assigned to it, they redrew all the character art for this game to look more American. Oh, beautiful. So Garrett has more of an anime look in Japan. A lot of Langrisser stands in chat, so they're happy. I picked this soldier. Yeah, give, give me all the soldiers you got. More, more, more! Keep them coming. And uh, you, you can have uh, some archers. There you go. That's all you need. Just one? Just one. Okay. Let's see. We're going to put him here. And we're going to put him right next to him. It's not like we have much choice here. And yeah, if you're only familiar with later stuff like Shining Force, you may be a little bit overwhelmed by this game because all the different characters have huge squadrons that they command. Look at this. Hey, didn't you give them a big squadron? I did, but each each soldier that I purchased was actually 10 soldiers. So on this battlefield, there's something like 200 people fighting at the same time. See how it says X10 underneath all the little characters there? Yeah. Oh, and also, a uh, narrative unfolds in the middle of battle, which was kind of unheard of at the time. Usually it was all like, a uh, little bit of story, and then you battle, and then a little bit of story afterwards. Okay, and the story begins. I think in order to escape, we gotta get outside the castle and maybe just, like, run over here or something. Or do you want to go out the back? I would assume out the back would be best, so they wouldn't notice, but... Yeah, maybe up here somewhere. Yeah. Just, you know, sneak on out so they can't see me. Mm hmm Go to the Outback Steakhouse. No, I don't want a Bloomin' Onion. And this is where the game becomes a little bit repetitive, because specifically in Langrisser 1, you have to guide all your individual squadrons before your turn is over. <laughs> I think in Langrisser 2, it simplified it a little bit, and you can just make multiple troops uh, advance at once. I really like Langrisser 2, dude. If you've never played that game, you got to play it. I don't think I have. It's super good. And unfortunately, it wasn't localized, but it did have a fan translation many years later. I'm just going to move my dudes into place and let the enemy attack us so you can see what the battles look like. Really, this game's only fault is not being Langrisser 2, which is kind of regarded as one of the best Mega Drive games and a huge, huge classic. I guess you can't really blame it for not being something that it's not. Yeah, you had to have Langrisser 1 before you had Langrisser 2. Mm -hmm. Hey, I love the audio. Are they just killing little mermaids? Yeah. God damn, what the, what the... They're killing our mermaids. D no! So yeah, you can see with uh, the setup here, this more resembles something like Nectaris, aka Military Madness. Mm. Though, in modern terms, you may immediately think of something like Fire Emblem, which I guess is kind of similar. 
Wait, are we the mermaids or are they the mermaids? I think these are our defensive mermaids and okay. they're taking them all out. Oh man. It's kind of a weird series. Also, if you want to play this game, holy shit, do you have choices? Because it was ported like a billion times. There's a version on PCFX. Uh, it got dramatically remade on Super Famicom as Der Langrisser. And that version was later ported to many other systems, including the Switch. You can actually play this on Nintendo Switch if you want. But uh, it's been so many years and so many ports later that it doesn't really resemble this original game all that much. Sorry, just the way that one unit just fucking flopped over. Yeah, that guy didn't stand a chance. Oh my fucking god. Who's this guy think he is? I love looking at the American art because I've played more of uh, Langrisser mm -hmm. and it just kind of looks, I don't know, American comic ish. Maybe a it, little bit Lisa Frankish. It does. It does. It does have the American comic vibe. Like, like some. God, it looks like the Final Fantasy uh, Marvel comic that never came out. Mm hmm. So, Treco, they really believed in this game, and they were right to because it turned into a huge, huge popular series afterward. If only they had localized Langrisser 2 instead, then I think this may have really caught on. But as it is, the first game in the series is a little bit too clunky for uh, Americans to wrap their brain around. Mostly because they didn't have a point of comparison, you know? Because what was like this in 1991? Mm -hmm. I guess if you had a Turbo Graphics, you would play Military Madness, but... I just like the way all the dudes bounce up against each other. I do. I do go, love Whoa. that. Whoa. It's even funnier when they're fantasy creatures. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Not the mermaids. And let me tell you, this game beats the crap out of something like Crest of Gaia for PC Engine. That's right. I said it. Damn. All you Crest of Gaia fans, first of all, you don't exist. I was Second of all, that game sucks. They're all in our chat and they're pissed off now. <laughs> Always look forward to pissing people off every week. Mm -hmm. Every fr every Wednesday, you tune in to hear us get you all mad. So while I get slaughtered here, uh, basically your takeaway here is this is a huge release for Treco, even if it didn't make much of an impact at the time. They were right to localize this. They had they were again ahead of their time in mm -hmm. focusing on this game, translating it, and even going so far as to redraw the artwork. Had to put a lot of resources into this, and it's a shame it wasn't more popular. I like War Song, and maybe you do too. I do too. I'm sorry. I'm just watching this, and I am I am all in. Uh, you're being asked if you have any Last Queen takes. I have never heard of Last Queen. Is that another bad strategy RPG from Telenet, possibly? I am assuming. I am assuming. Telenet didn't make many good ones. This is just... I'm just... I'm fast. I've just never heard of this game before. Yeah, I mean, I... there's just so many units, especially in this first level. I love how many units there are, though. I love that you have this little team of freaks. Oh, the lizard men are breaching the the nice. southern quadrant. Oh no! Our anime babes. <laughs> the lizard men are so cute. Our oh anime my babes God. are evenly matched against the lizard men, unless it's ten to one. Oh God. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, I think the lizard men are gonna win. I'm I sorry. Think, I think the lizard men are gonna take the castle today. Lizard men are OP. I enjoy this game. Give it a shot. And especially give Langrisser 2 a shot if you haven't. It is kind of amazing. But next up for Treco, they're actually beginning to wrap things up here in America because we only have, what, two more games? Yeah, just two. Jeez. Luckily, the next one is a huge one. It's Fighting Masters. <laughs> oh my god, they actually published Fighting Masters. Real quick, thank you to Borant Pleakernet for the 20-month resub. They say, are we all showing our units? Hey! <laughs> it ain't that kind of stream, but thank you. I uh, hope you like flashing. Sorry about that. <laughs> you are being asked to please pick Gold Rock. You got it. Always go top tier. Always go Gold Rock. I just see, just see people going Gold Rock. There's some fans of this game. I've seen a fair few people stream this. And boy, is it something! So much so, I'm not even gonna let the what? Uh, I'm not even gonna gonna let the demo play you out. You didn't! Oh, the, uh, the the horseman! Yeah, you got you got some choices of characters in here. You got Dirk, who's boring, but he's 57 feet high and 2,200 pounds. Hey, 57 feet! <laughs> he looks great. 
He's Mastodon, huge. who is 60 feet tall. Mm-hmm. We got Equus. Who is 64 feet and 2,000. I love Equus. I wouldn't want to fuck with a 64-foot horse man. Mm-hmm. We got Morin, who is a mere 54 feet. He's not going to last long. Mm-hmm. Grinder. Who is cool as hell and is Look doing a nice dance. dance. That's how I walk. That's, that's the Fortnite dance, at least mm-hmm. the first couple steps of it. We have Goldrock, of course, who is um, 55 feet tall and 9,990 pounds. They're just a little guy. They're just a little guy. Phoenix, the gargoyle. Mm-hmm. Pretty neat. Zygrunt, the crab man. Yeah, that's crabby. Rotundo. Who I love. Look at that face. Oh, that's a good face. I trust Rotundo. Mm-hmm. Xenon, the dragon. Okay, I like them. You know, in any other game, this would be the standout character, but now it's just like, oh, it's a dragon. Big yeah. Deal. It's not a gargoyle or, or gold rock. Dio, of course, is a man-eating plant mm-hmm. who is 55 feet tall. And you can also go with Uppercut, this freak. I love Uppercut, by the way. I like the boxing rock. freak. Now, this is a pre-Street Fighter II one-on-one fighting game. I want to emphasize that. This was developed and released before Street Fighter II was known to exist. So it does things a little bit differently than many other fighters would do in the years afterward. Thank you, 81 Rambler, for the 50 bits. 81 Rambler says, so we have an option to fight a 65-foot horse. Is there an also 65 chickens stacked on top of each other? <laughs> I wish. That's God a good idea. Damn. <laughs> Thank you. It's a tournament to the death. You don't see that in fighting games. Very rare. Well, in most tournaments, everyone's like, we're fighting to live. Yeah, we're fighting to be friends. I am here to make friends. Now, if you're expecting combos or anything resembling a modern fighting game, you may not want to play this game. On the other hand, you absolutely should play this game because it's amazing. Got 100 bits from Permafusion for selecting the best character. Thank you. First of all, this game maps jump to C. What? You push the C button to jump. You have a kick, and um, I, actually that's it. You have one attack button and one punch button. I don't like button. the way you move. I don't like the movements. Why not? It's... And this game has a unique damage system where every time you touch a wall or a floor, you take damage. Or if you happen to strike the enemy. Good lord, this guy is kicking my ass. Um... Actually, the attacks don't seem to do anything. It's all about just throwing the dude to the ground, and that's when they take damage. Kind of weird, huh? That. So the floor is lava, and the and the, the walls are lava. Yeah. So you're just you're just in hell. Now the strat is to get close enough to throw a dude, because the throws are where all the big damage happens. God damn, this guy's got you. Or does he? Oh, he does. He does. I got got. What? This is bizarre. Isn't it, though? The strangest cast of characters with the strangest fighting mechanics. Goodbye, Goldrock. I'll beat him this time. Okay, I believe in you. I Though, though people have practiced this game, and there's a very high skill level threshold among fighting masters players here on Twitch, I'm not one of those people. You're not a professional gold rock player? Not yet. Of course, now that Sony took over Evo, this game's never gonna get back in. They better put it back in. I mean, I want the full, I want this, and I want um, whatever E. Cole makes. All the Melty Bloods, 20 Ooh, yeah. Melty Bloods, yeah. Kapow. Oh yeah, nice. it's good to bounce them off the wall because that's double damage. Oh, this is on Fight Cade? Oh good, good to know. Is it good? <laughs> 300 bits from Cambrian are a big face, big face, big face. I found a second move. Check this out. Check this out. So when you okay. jump, Mastodon, let me let me do my thing. Let me do my thing. When you jump, you can kick. Also, when you jump, you can push down and you can do this. Look at that move. <laughs> In this moment, I am serene. I love him. Oh, you can do short hops in this game. What the hell? So it's basically KOF. <laughs> you are so close to winning. Get him. 
Get his ass, yes. Man, I really need to set no up No more fight Mastodon. Cade. The servers have been deleted. I told someone I'd set up Fight Cade so I could play with him, but now I have extra incentive. Chat's calling him the Nixon for that move? Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're making me love Gold Rock. What a cool guy. All right, let's fight Equus and then we'll move on. I'm so excited to see Equus. What a game. I wish I hadn't sold this one. I used to have a complete Treco collection, all the games complete in box. That's not that impressive because those games are very cheap, except for Warsong. This game, though, I wish I hadn't sold it because... Fuck! <laughs> I wish I hadn't sold Same. it because it came with a set of 12 trading cards featuring uh, all the different characters. What? <laughs> yeah, if you bought this game new at retail, it came with a complete set of Fighting Masters trading cards, and I'm never going to be able to get those back because who kept that shit? Could have seen Equus. I had a Gold Rock trading card, and you didn't even know. I didn't! I am so jealous. Yeah, I'm with you, Mike. I'm jealous. Oh, my God. I love that little victory pose he does. Oh, my God. I found the strat, I think. Let's just rush up, try and go in for a throw. Oh, no. Oh, shit! Bwah. Equus, no. So even this go though this game is janky as fuck, it still has an appeal to it. Just the fact that there's a giant horse man grabbing a rock man, jumping him high up in the air, only to pile drive him into the dirt. And they're both like thousands upon thousands of pounds. Yes, and, and dozens of feet high. Mm -hmm. It takes a certain kind of person to really enjoy fighting masters, but I am that person, and maybe you are too. Equus. I gotta rebuy this game. I'm a fan. You do. Equus wins. Poor Gold Rock. They look like they're either smiling or in serious pain. Aww. Well, that's unfortunate. And even more unfortunate is our time with Treco has come to an end. Because we're about to cover their final game, released in August of 1993. It is Sorcerer's Kingdom. So I guess Warsong must have did some numbers for them, because with their last release, they turned back to the RPG genre. This kind of has strategy elements. You'll see. Okay. That makes sense. It's usually who holds crowns. Okay. Kings are usually well known. Kings usually encourage adventuring. Mm-hmm. That's what's wrong with the world today. Not enough world leaders are encouraging adventuring. Yeah, they're all encouraging all this other shit, and they're not like, my, please, go slay the dragon. Yeah. No one's, no one's giving away s swords. Less war, more dragon slaying. Treko's final release. Is it any good? I just think people should be given large swords by the government. Uh-huh. Government, you know, just government-issued swords for all. The Adventurer, Kanan. No relation to Conan. I kind of like this track, though. I do, too. I just want a sword, a government-issued sword now. I'm sorry. <laughs> like that little walk cycle. It was so good. It was jaunty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of the king, I'll be in the king's service. Take the magic map. It'll reward you. And then there's something stuff. Remember to visit the king. You got that, Danny? Yeah. I read like every other word. Mm -hmm. So, meet the dragon. Got it. Your jaunty walk. You look like you're wearing... Are you wearing overalls? Because it looks like you're wearing overalls. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I need actual equipment like you just start out in a pair of overalls. So your character does move pretty quick in this game, which is a nice change of pace. I've been watching uh, Barley Bat play Fantasy Star 3, and boy, do those characters take their time when they walk around. <laughs> this actually does look very similar to PS3 now that I think about it. Bemo, I'm with you. We need a cash for clunkers program for swords. Yes. Agreed. Man, can we just leave? Or is this one of those games where you gotta talk to everybody? Let's just leave and get killed by monsters. 
Don't be reckless. You got it. I think you're being a little reckless. Says you. Battle! So, look at this. You don't get taken to a separate battle screen. All the battles happen on the actual in-game map. Hey, I love that. That's pretty neat. That is neat. I like that a lot. And it's tile-based, so it kind of has an RPG, or a strategy RPG-ish bent to it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was their reasoning. Like, Warsong was a little bit of a hit for us, so why not publish a game that's a little bit like Warsong? Unfortunately, I've played a couple hours of this, and I can confirm <laughs> that it is very boring and bad. <laughs> Sorry, the death animation was really funny. He just kind of spiraled into death. It was really good. I like the attack animations, too. It's all like, bap, bap, bap. I'm dead. That's it. Uh, D is dead. That's it. So, if you like what you saw and want to play 100 hours of it, Sorcerer's Kingdom is your game. And that is the final release from Treko. Later on, we're going to evaluate Treko's lineup and put it up against Vic Tokai's, but... For now, just, I don't know, envision uh, what you think of Treko, having seen their catalog. Envision it in your mind's eye. Mm -hmm. Think of them as we wage war with Victor Tokai. I just, I think Victor should lay off a little bit because I'm seeing some of these games and these are pretty good. Yeah, Vic, Vic's got a good lineup, but Treko had Warsong. It, it's hard to compete against that, but we'll see how they do it. This is it. Vic Tokai on Sega Genesis. We've covered him before, right? I want to say we did an NES Vic Tokai thing, or maybe not. Maybe I'm just misremembering streams. We've done so many of them. <laughs> but let's start things off at the beginning with a game that was published by Vic Tokai in Japan, but published by Renovation here in the States. It's Whiprush. I don't think I've heard of this one. Well, we briefly covered this when we played uh, all the Renovation games many years ago. Because Renovation, if you'll recall, they were the U.S. branch of Telenet. And they localized a bunch of Telenet games in addition to games from other publishers that they didn't want to release over here. Yeah, those ships are tiny in comparison to the other games. Hang on, they'll okay. get bigger. I don't know, this intro is going to have to be pretty good to match up to Task Force Harrier EX. It's going to need a lot of waggling. You got a giant alien vessel materializing in the vicinity of Mars. Does that count? Mm. Oh, now it's heading to Earth. Now I'm interested. Target Earth. Wait, that's different. <laughs> Listen to this title screen riff. Okay. This whips. Yeah. Wow. I'm all in. I'm all into Whip Rush. That is a great title screen theme. One of the greats, in my opinion. Unfortunately, this game is, uh, it's okay. Oh, I remember this game now. Mm -hmm. I've seen this. Okay, okay. For me, this sits right alongside other mediocre Mega Drive shmups like uh, Arrow Flash and, um, let's say Curse. Ah, this is better than Curse. So right away, we already learned that there was a war in shoot 'em ups on the Mega Drive. It was a, a race to publish as many of the damn things as you could here in the States. A bunch of people doing it. Both Treko and Vic Tokai indulged in that. And they did so for many years before shoot 'em ups eventually became less popular than they were. For a time, though, that was pretty much the genre on Mega Drive, and some of the earliest games, like Truxton, they became some big standouts. Yeah, there's a lot of parallax in this. Oh yeah, look at all those layers. layers like a fine onion or shrek if you prefer this is like so this is like a prototypical shrek em up yeah shrek em up how dare you i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> see chat says about this game it's trying they tried it's okay 
I like this multi-directional weapon. That's neat. It's cute. Oh, here we have some full screen flashing. Beware. Let's see, chat. How you doing? What do y'all say? Is this better or worse than the shoot 'em ups you've seen some from Treco? Well, chat says this looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> but is it all right enough to beat uh, Twin Cobra? Another all right shoot 'em up. I would say Task Force Harrier is um, all right. Point five. That's my score. <laughs> Notably, this game has vertically scrolling sequences. Notice that. Like, it's it's still from a horizontal perspective, but you're scrolling up and down instead of to the side. Let's see. It's more all right. This looks cooler than Twin Cobra. On the same level. Okay. All right. Yeah, all this right. game's okay. I could get down with Whip Rush if I didn't have any other choices. Boy, a lot more emphasis on maneuverability than enemy squadrons. Compare this to, say, uh, Bioship Paladin, where there was 50,000 sprites at once. This goes to show that even though shoot 'em ups are pretty similar, uh, uh, you know, foundationally, mm -hmm. they can still have their own unique gimmicks and things. Their own personality. Their someday, own... someday I'm gonna cover all 57 Mega Drive shoot 'em ups. There are that oh. many. I counted. Wait, Fuck. really? Yes. Even more in Japan. We had tons of them over here. Even more for the Mega Drive. I like this background. It's like, if we do that, we have to do it for a charity drive, and it's gonna be like, you're gonna be playing so many games, you may as well pick a cause of, like, solving every single problem on Earth. Mm hmm. We're gonna fix all the diseases, every last one of them. Thank you, Jordan Mallory, for the five-month resub. Jordan says, Retro Pals do what Nintendo don't. That is damn fucking We sure rude. don't. They're cowards. Thank they you. are cowards. They would never do Whip Rush. They would never do Whip It. So is that, is that the last shoot 'em up we've seen tonight? Probably not, but let's move on. Next game, Vic Tokai itself still isn't publishing games in the States by itself, but it is publishing games for the Mega Drive. And one of their first Mega Drive releases is a kind of controversial game by the name of Magical Hat no Butobi Turbo. Controversial, huh? Uh-huh. If you don't know what this game is, you may know it after I start playing. Because this actually was released in the United States, and when it came over here, it was basically unrecognizable. In Japan, though, it was based on some anime or something. Wait, wait, what is this? Looks familiar, right? Oh, no, I see what Chad is saying. No, 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 no. Look at that. No. That dude was in the U.S. version. He was just, like, no. recolored. No. So naturally, they swapped out all the anime characters and did a pretty dramatic reskin for the U.S. release, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But this original Japanese version isn't often seen, and a lot of people just assume it's straight up uh, a reskin. But in fact, the two games have completely distinct level designs. And I would argue this one is a fair bit worse. Mm. It's cool, though. It's kid cool. And boy, if you like Psycho Fox, this is the next game in the series. The series that started out with uh, Kid Cool on the NES, then later Psycho Fox on Master System. This is the final entry in the series. Or at least, um, you know, the Japanese version. So this was a decap attack, correct? It was, yep. Some people knew. And you would barely know it looking at this original game. It's got a lot of the familiar elements. It's got the, the rickety bridges. It's got dudes you can stomp on. It's got the birds. Oh. And it has that thing where you can, like, uh, do a wily e. Coyote off an edge. I do like that. I like that a lot. That's really, that's really, really charming. Uh, Codeman mentions that Decap Attack not only has a different soundtrack, but a different fucking sound engine. Yeah. Yeah, they really, really did a number on this game. It's got these weird poles that were also featured in Psycho Fox and uh, Kid Cool. In this version, they give you a one-up every time you bounce off it, which is completely nuts to me. How many one-ups? You have a lot. Yeah. I think in Decap Attack it just makes you regain health. And speaking of which, guess what isn't in this game? A health bar. Hey, I don't like that. 
You get two hits. Uh, one, it gets rid of your little egg friend, and the second hit kills you. So you see what I mean about this being incredibly different <laughs> when it came out over here? Yeah. It basically plays the same, though. It's just a little bit uh, doofier looking. You make the worst faces when you die. Mm -hmm. And in real life. Oh, there we go. You don't want to see the kind of faces I make when uh, I die. Yeah, you're, it, it's quite awful. No, no, one, uh, no one webcam into us. It's really gross. <laughs> How do I get up here? Can I... Okay, I see. Wait, just... Just that one, not this one? Fine. I hate this, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a little strange. It has this weird mechanic where you can, like, delay your... your falling... by, uh, tapping the jump button. That's also into cap attack. Oh, right, I forgot! Uh, this thing. You have inventory in this game. Uh, oh, hey! Do it. Oh, what does this one do? Nothing? Maybe I'm faster or something. There we go, we did it. There you go. Oh, it's a different bonus game. Oh, hey! That's extremely strange to me because, uh... This bonus game uses the classic American pastime of slot machine gambling, mm -hmm. while the American Decap Attack uses the Japanese pastime of Amida Kuji, or Amidar. Hey, yeah! What the fuck? It's like a cultural exchange. I have 17 fucking lives. <laughs> you have too many lives. <laughs> also, the sky just opened up. Yeah. <laughs> it should be fine. There have been a lot of storms in this town lately. Tell them to move away. Yeah. All the storms are moving in, too. It's it's awful. Stop gentrifying. Quit it, you storms. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of your shit. Oh, yeah, one hit deaths. Horrible face you make when you die. I do not, I do not like it. So what's this game got? It's got anime style. It's mm -hmm. got a score system that was missing into Cap Attack. Mm -hmm. What is it missing? A life bar. Uh, playability. That's the big thing it's missing. Fun, I would say, yeah. is... Um... This original release is kind of janky. The level design is not all there. It's not as frustrating as something like Kid Cool, but they could uh, they could have polished it up a little bit. Luckily, someone did step in and polish it up a little bit. And that person was Sega. Thank you, Sega. Sega said, you know what, Victokai? Go back. Do it again. Redo it. Only instead of a, a cute little anime guy... You're a weird mummy man. So they freakified it. I yeah. like that. I like that the, the, the lands are now a horrible human skeleton. Good. I'm gonna let you enjoy the story while I the camera. Oh. oh my god! They're little freaks! It's all freak town. They've all been freakified. This guy is still kind of here, but he's red now. He's got cool uh, paladins. I like this. I think the word you were looking for was pauldrons. Pauldrons. But my maybe paladins too. Maybe he's got two little knights on his shoulder or whatever. Okay, chat saying the music fucks. Okay. My name is Chuck, and I'm here to fuck. Thanks, Chuck. So they gave this game kind of a horror Halloween-ish theme? Look at- that's the dude you are. You're, you're a torso. And legs. You don't have a head. It's a lot to explain. And this is the game some of y'all are likely more familiar with. Oh, I don't like this. The much more drab and spooky looking game. And notice you have that life bar, like I mentioned. It's got some neat little embell embellishments, like uh, these transparent platforms. Still got the same mechanics where you can stomp dudes into the ground or throw your head at them. Mm -hmm. You could say this is a real head-ass game. Damn. I love that little wiggle he do when you fly. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's good. I don't like his attack though. This the the thing that yeah, that's I don't mm. You don't like you don't like a face coming out of your flesh? Yeah, especially cuz it's ex like extendo flesh. It's all stretchy and stuff. That's not right. You don't show that to kids. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> 
No extendable flesh limbs at Pride. <laughs> I do kind of like the theme, though. They really committed to it. They made everything all freakified and horror-ish. And nasty. And nasty. A lot of nastiness in this game. And if you look really closely, uh, it's kind of similar in structure, in that the first level was side-scrolling and this is more vertically scrolling. But if you compare them side, to, side by side, the level layouts are actually almost completely different. They completely did all the levels, or rather redid uh, the levels for this version. And I would say it's definitely an improvement based on what I've played. They got rid of the uh, unlimited one-ups exploit. They made the difficulty a little bit more manageable by giving you a life bar, which you can later extend. Essentially making this more of a, a game. And, it's, and less of a janky piece of shit in the vein of Kid Cool. Glad to hear it's less of a janky piece of shit. This yeah. does look bad. I mean, maybe it's not as colorful as the other game, but this looks way more fun to play. It's way more playable. They messed with your jumping. They make you even more floaty than you were in Magical Hat, believe it or not. But that's actually a good thing. Your walk is so stupid in this game. I love it. Yeah, you just kind of lumber along. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you also still have the inventory system, but it looks like this. So cool. I'm sorry. I love these little freaks. I know I'm using that phrase a lot, <laughs> but there's a lot of I think little it's freaks on the Sega. Yeah. Yeah, no extra lives here. Side. Oh, that power up freezes enemies. I see. Ah. Uh, okay. The game's got a real flow to it, mostly because the amount of control you have over your character. It doesn't play much like your Sonics or even your Sockets, but it's not a bad time. And it's Victor Kai, so, you know. Yeah, you're supporting someone who, who matters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, if, if Victor Kai made a tweet that was like, I support gay rights, I would believe them and mm -hmm. I, would, I, would, I would feel seen. I would be like, that tracks. Every other corporation. Good old Victor Kai. Every other corporation, I don't believe them. But Vic Tokai, if they said they liked me, I'd believe them. I'm very parasocial with Vic Tokai. Oh my god, who is that? Look at this fucking dude. I don't like them. They are... Oh, they are gnarly looking. Oh, oh, no thank you. They went all out on the gnarliness on this game. To the point where I kind of have to admire it, even if the art style isn't my particular kind of thing. Yeah. And if you want more on the continuing adventures of Chuck D. Head, there were literally more than 150 comic strips published uh, about this game in the Sonic the Hedgehog comics. Did you know that? I did not. I did not know about uh, the world of Chuck D. Head comics. Oh, I forgot about this mechanic. In the last level in each world, you gotta, you gotta search around to find a key item before you're allowed to leave. I don't like that. The rest of the game's okay, though. Let's move on. So you're just... The way your head moves, too. Ugh, it's very... A truly disgusting game. Mm -hmm. Tell you what's not disgusting. Troubleshooter. I love them. Who are they? They are Madison. Uh-huh. And Crystal. Okay, I love them. See, they sapped all the anime out of uh, Decap Attack and put it into this game. Troubleshooter, or Battle Mania in Japan. Okay. It's another shmup, and true to the Victokai name, kind of a weird one. Hey, this music? Mm-hmm. This, this sounds like anime music. Yeah, this game has a really good soundtrack. They even reuse a couple of tracks from uh, Decap Attack, specifically the level end theme. Okay, so this guy's a piece of shit, and mm -hmm. she's like, okay. Ugh. All the times we're called in to avoid international incidents. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the localization has some has some attitude to it. <laughs> All right, do it. Not the shopping plaza. No, the shopping plaza. <laughs> it 
Yeah, this is definitely not Dirty Pair, not uh, no, not at all. Crisis, yeah. For each level, you get to choose a sub weapon, and look what's in the lower left corner. It's a little ship from Whip Rush. Oh, I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. Your car, holy shit. Yeah, you start off in a car, and then you just jump out and start flying everywhere. Yeah, you're doing it swiftly, yet uh, no one's gonna notice you. Yeah, silently. Mm -hmm. Look at this background. I really enjoy this. This is so good. Compare this to the drab colors we've seen in the other shoot 'em ups we've seen so far, and this one obviously stands out. You got one lady who fires in front of you, the other fires behind. I think um, Madison is invincible. Only Crystal can take damage. Mm -hmm. You have a limited number of lives. Uh, there's a real unfortunate thing about this game, though. You lose a life every time you get shot. If you get crushed by an object, you lose all your lives at once, and it's a game over. Oh, shit. So okay. be very careful as you progress through this game. I mean, that makes sense. When you get crushed in real life, you usually die. Oh, yeah. I've been there. They even talk a little bit. I love them. I love Victoka. I'm all in. I'm sorry not to... Not to influence the audience's choice, but I'm all in on Victokai here. This is a standout for sure. Out of all the games we've seen so far, I, I can get excited about this one. I also have a complete copy of this game, and one of these days, I'm going to sell it to fund a house. Nice, nice. Everybody keep driving up the price on Troubleshooter. Thank you. <laughs> Do me a favor. I don't know. I, I you, you see what they say about the housing market here in Austin. We, we really need... Collectors, please overinflate this price. Thank mm -hmm. you. This game deserves it too, though, is the thing. I'm not just telling you to support some bullshit. This is an actual good game. It had a pretty low print run. Yeah, this isn't like Chase the Chuck Wagon. This is a real deal. <laughs> Chase the Chuck Wagon. The game our Elgato refused to play. I don't know why I'm anti Chase the Chuck Wagon. I think it's because they wouldn't show up, you know? Soundtrack. Okay, so we all we need to do is tell people this game is a hidden gem. Got it. Oh, this is the hiddenest of gems. <laughs> wow. Sorry for peeking the mic, but wow. 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 They're giving kisses out. Wow. I mentioned before how all the shoot 'em ups we played have some personality to an extent, but this game has all the personality. Every last bit of it. I'm in love. Ha. Huh. He just he just stands there and goes ha. It's a standoff. I oh, there I we love go. this. Oh there he goes. <laughs> what a cool game. That guy doesn't attack, do they? I don't think he does. That's beautiful. Oh, now he does. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of your buttons can turn the other girl around in case you need double the firepower on one side. Oh, yeah. Dealing that damage. I love this. I love... This I game's love... super cool. This is probably one of my favorites on Genesis. I love the video game Dirty Pair. I love the knockoff Dirty Pair so much. Mm -hmm. uh, my opinion on the US box art of this game is that it's really good. Same thing with the Japanese box art. In fact, are you showing it to me here? Oh yeah, that's, that's great. I love them. That's the decapitat bit that they stole. It's so good. I call it an homage. Look at hey. this, look what they're doing to the poor prince. Awesome. One of these days, we're going to do an entire stream dedicated to the Battle Mania series. It won't take long. There's only two games. But this is the only one that got released over here, and it is good. Yeah, they do look like aerobics instructors on the uh, on the American cover here. But... Hey, they had to sell it to American audiences. I mean, wouldn't you buy it with that cover? I guess. I definitely do feel like I'm going to the nail salon, though. <laughs> A little bit. Let's move on. Okay. I'll play Troubleshooter all day. But you know what else I like? What do you like? Fishing. Do you? No. 
<laughs> you said that so pained, honey. <laughs> I don't. I don't like fishing, unless we're talking Sega bass fishing. But Sega bass fishing, this is not. So look at that collection of companies down there. You got Sega, of course, but you have Vic Tokai and Sage's Creation. <laughs> Sage's Creation wanted to publish this in the States, but I think uh, their division closed down before they could, and so Vic Tokai picked it up themselves. Uh, Sage's Creation, we've covered before. They were Hot B. Another He's company. over there! He's over there because. Because. Yeah, actual Sage has worked on this. It's we're going to go ass fishing. Honey. I have a hunch I will catch a big one. Hey, I think the storm is coming through. On the yeah, way. it's storming outside. Really good day for fishing. That just means the fish will be excited. Ooh, I remember this game. We actually have played this before. I think we did cover it during our Sage's Creation stream. I do remember this. You remember it? Yes. Salmon aren't running here. Oh, come on. What is a good spot to you? Do I have to actually observe the fish? That's bullshit. No kings. How about, can I just like ram into the, no, I guess not. Oh, we're just wasting time out here on the lake. Hey, Good music though. It's chill, you know, it's fine. We're just on Ladybird Lake, just chilling. Dude, can I please play the game? The folks want to see what this game looks like. Okay, Maybe. here we go. Cool. This game, it has a surprising amount of boat driving in this game. What do you call driving a boat? Navigating? Sailing. Sailing, that's it. And as such, you can just ram into the other competitors and take them out of the game. <laughs> the other boat returns to the port. Nice. <laughs> this is all I remember about this game. Apparently the fishing in this game is very difficult. So instead, what I do is this. If I'm the only one left, there can only be one winner. I mean, you're not wrong. All right, let's drag the lure over. Uh, nope, changed my mind. There we go. The strategy ended in a uh, tragedy last time we tried it, by the way. I bet we get lucky did here. You, did you die? No, I pushed the wrong button. Oh, okay. So this is like destroying the other team in Cyber Series Base Wars? Yes. There's all the fish I caught. You impressed? Mm -hmm. Well, you could catch a couple more silver salmon, but that looks pretty good. Eh, let's finish for today. Okay. I think we had a good day. Mm -hmm. We rammed a couple of people's boats. We took them off the, the competition. <laughs> Unfortunately, everyone else was too busy actually fishing, so we ranked 30th. Damn Too bad, ass. Everybody copy down that password. Got it. So you can resume ass's progress. <laughs> Next up, though, boy, do I have a game for you. This is Mazin Saga Mutant Fighter. <laughs> Holy crap, what a game to release. This is from the guy who made Devil Man, and apparently this is even more twisted than Devil Man ever was, based on the descriptions I've seen in our Discord. Yeah, go in the guy, that's him. Okay. Look at him, he's grooving. He's ready to do this. I'm ready to do this. I'm really excited. I love going to Guy. I'm not too familiar with him. Well, they produce a lot of material for freaks, so. Oh, good. This whole stream has been nothing but games for freaks. I know, it's really great. It's like an Alex stream. Yeah. Now note the mini animation frames on these enemy characters, especially when I beat them up. Like, there's just a few more frames than you would expect, you know? But they look good. They do. Look at that, they bend over and everything. God damn. Really selling those attacks. And you might be saying, you know what, this looks okay in terms of animation, but the gameplay might be a little simplistic for my, take, my taste. To which I say, giant foot. Why did you... okay. You ain't seen this in Final Fight. I mean, you're right. Thank God. <laughs> it 
does look astonishingly animated. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about Bigfoot though. Got He's throws. tossing them. Mm -hmm. Even the GitHub anima animations, which is typically like what one frame here, it's yeah. like twelve frames. They're so animated. And I can appreciate that. This being based on a uh, famous artist's work, of course, you want the artist to, rather the art to, really shine. Mm -hmm. Beautiful anime. I love the way they get up. Oh mm -hmm. my god. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this, but the game does have one more surprise in store once we get to a certain point. You know, back when I had this game, I sold it for like, what, 30 bucks? It, it wasn't really anything anyone wanted. I bet you anything that has changed in the years since. I bet you anything this is now an expensive Genesis game. This has Hidden Jim all, written all over it. This is YouTuber Catnip. It is. God. Oh, Codeman mentions uh, game's music is by uh, Kazuo Osawa, who did the music for River City Ransom. Oh, cool. Fascinating. I researched it earlier, and this is developed by a company called Almanac, who did another game for Treco, but I forgot which one it was. Wait a minute, I remember. This is from the developers of Fighting Masters. <laughs> uh, that explains yes. a lot. So that's why this game kicks ass. I gotta look into Almanac, because I only played two of their games, but they're incredible. Oh, this game is 250 bucks complete now? Cool. Uh, I wish I didn't know that, but well. Sorry. <laughs> Like Treco, I also had a complete collection of Vic Tokai Genesis games. I sold those off. I only kept Troubleshooter. Man, this plays better than I remember, too. Why did I sell this? Oh yeah, I needed rent money. Okay, um, some clarity here. Uh, this uh, Fighting Masters was programmed by AL ALU. Uh, okay. He did programming on this, but this was designed by Almanic, who worked on EV uh, Evo, The Search for Eden, Eden, and Wonder Project J. Hmm. So Almanac had quite a history. They did pretty much everything. I want to get to one of the boss fights. You'll see why in a second. Boy, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm really glad we didn't get around to playing a game that Cass really wanted us to play yesterday. That was a game called Cyborg Justice for Genesis. Mm. That's like this if it played like shit. No, boo. Get his ass. I assume the boss, is the boss really big? I just oh, you'll to... see. Okay, I'm you'll really see. excited. You hold up. I'll be patient. I like the little armadillo friends who are attacking you, too. They're not friends. Well, okay, fair. Your armadillo uh, mortal enemies. Yeah. I'm enemies with a lot of armadillos in real life, too. They don't like me. I, I like ask, them. I was gonna. I was gonna ask why, but I assumed you talked shit. I just. I just make a really bad impression sometimes, you know. No, no, you're. I just think that these these armadillos that don't like you, I just think that they're, I don't know, they're, uh, they're, and, oh my god, I was gonna say they were homophobic or something, but this is even, <laughs> look at this fucking I, guy. I need to think on this, I need to not make jokes, because this is here. Oh god. You just got smacked to death. I sure did. Is that the thing you have to hit? The arms? That would make sense. Oh, God. What if I did this thing? Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, the armadillos are mad because of Danny's stance on infogrames. That's fair. <laughs> I like armadillos. I just cannot abide by their... It took me off the screen. I, I was gone. Goodbye. I left. Oh, he poked me from behind. It's not cool. I don't think I'm gonna win this fight. Yeah, this looks tough. Or? Oh shit, you did it! You defeated 
Pippi skeleton stockings here. And look at this. What? Yep, this is the same game, believe it or not. The boss fights look like this. You got a block button, you got a sword button, and you got a jump button. Okay, all right. So, I enjoy this. Calling back to Fighting Masters, it's a jump button based game. But look at this animation. Both player and enemy are made up of many finely detailed joints. It's like Ernest Evans, but even cooler. It is. What a neat game this is. No wonder it's $250. God damn it. I knew I should have kept this one. Sorry, I love that guy's tail. It's so cool. It's so well animated. It is. So, so far, Vic Tokai looking pretty good, but we haven't seen their full lineup. After all, every publisher has their fair share of crap. I can confirm, however, that this is not crap. Here we go, we got him. He's weak against swords. A lot of things are. I mean, swords are pretty good. I mean, I've been watching a lot of uh, uh, Deadliest Warrior, and they have a lot to say about swords. Also, <laughs> holy shit. Thank you, Murphigator, for the big, juicy host. Welcome. We are playing Mazin Saga Mutant Fighter. Nice. Thank you. We're going through all of uh, Vic Tokai's uh, Sega Genesis games right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have any luck with, uh, what was that, Riding Fight? That impossible-looking game <laughs> versus Slughead. Man, this game's cool. Slughead. Big recommend on this one. Do play Mazin Saga Mutant Fighter. It is a standout on Sega Genesis. I love it. What do we got next? Uh, let's see. Looks up. Ooh, looks like next we have a pretty interesting one. Oh, this game. This game, huh? Mm-hmm. So, everyone was making mascot platformers around this time, including Vic Tokai. Apparently, Decap Attack and Magical Hat wasn't good enough for him. So they went full mascot with Socket the Time Duck. I just want to say, once again, I love the name Socket the Time Duck. Mm hmm There he is. We've covered this on Mascot Friday before, so I won't play too much of this. But okay. we did discover this little portrait of him in the pre-show. I love him. He's apparently bionic in nature. I guess he's, he's not a real duck. He's some kind of man-made creation. Or maybe ducks made the perfect duck. I'm um, okay. I'm glad the person who was waiting in chat for Socket gets to see Socket. There yeah, he here is. you go. There's your pal. There's your boy, Socket. Let me turn it up a little. This game's got good music. He's crossing his arms. He's got attitude. He's so cool. I really wish Socket played better because I like Socket a lot. He plugs into electrical outlets for energy. He is, in fact, electric powered. It's just a, oh man, this sounds mean, but it's like a, I don't want to say trashy, but it's a... It's a little trashy. It's a, it's a trashy Sonic. It's a trashy Sonic, basically. It's like... The thing is, you wouldn't think so from the first couple levels, because the game makes a really good first impression. Mm -hmm. But there are distinct level types that I remember in this game. There's these high speed sections, which of course are much like Sonic. And my least favorite sections are the so-called labyrinth zones, which are basically big mazes. Big mazes that are no fun. It's hard to say. I'm sorry, I just saw that. I'm sorry, Socket is Blinks' father adopted. <laughs> Thank you. Is that canon? Oh, it the, is the, now. The cat's complaining. You should let her back in. Okay, hold on. She's afraid of thunder, so. Oh, she is. Yeah. Now, if the whole game was like this, that would be amazing. And it isn't. The fact of the matter is, it isn't. Yeah, here we have an athletic area. Showing off Socket's athleticism. She's going to she's going to her favorite cardboard box to pounce. No. I don't kidding. blame her. I'd be doing the same thing if I wasn't streaming. My favorite box. So you got momentum in this game. You can go pretty fast, and that's fun when you can keep up that momentum. But the game doesn't do much to make that an easy thing to do. You're constantly stopped by all these... What is that down there? 
Um. <laughs> Holy shit! It's it's my favorite dog. Wow. I killed him. Did you just kill my favorite dog? Yeah. I'm. I did it for stream viewership. Okay. Okay. Let me check viewership. All right. Thank you. That's fine. Yeah. See. Okay. I did go up. Okay. Yeah, if you want our take on this game, check out our Mascot Friday coverage from probably several years ago. Yeah, a while back. It's on the Mascot Friday spreadsheet. Basically, it's not nearly as good as it lets on in these first couple levels, and that's really unfortunate. I wanted to like Socket the Time Duck. Yeah, here we go. You get into the labyrinth area, and then all oh, of a sudden, man. you're not having any more fun. But they had to do it. They had to make a mascot. I just wish Treko had made a mascot character. Yes. That thing would have been the most twisted thing ever. Listen, people will find out that Danny killed a dog for... He's killing mul... They're... You're killing multiple dogs for views, honey. <laughs> you... This is what the internet does to us. Chat, look at what they're doing. I... You're bearing witness to this too, okay? <laughs> Well, it's a labyrinth, so I'm already lost. I hate these levels. Socket is half of a good game. That's basically your takeaway from this. Half of a good game. I wish it was a complete good game. Next up, though, is a game so good that it was never released in the United States. This is a Japan exclusive. It's a sequel to Troubleshooter. Yes. Crystal and Madison are back. And it even com completes the illusion with a little uh, anime pre-show. Is this is this the final boss? Yeah, this is the final boss from the first game. Great game, A plus. Then it's all like three years later, and then it changes it to say, actually, it's three days later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this intro is very flashy. Fair enough. It's neat though. The babes are back. And they're pissed. What are they gonna do? I'd be pissed too if I saw how much this game was going for. This is a thousand dollar video game. What? No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. Lonesome Hunters at Heart. Or so called Liberty Chaser. We never sleep. Call us anytime. They shoot the title screen. <laughs> and then drop all their spent cases That's on so it. so good! This really, little icon. <laughs> I love this fake anime. It's my favorite fake anime. Oh yeah, this song. And yeah, this does have a really good translation patch. Chat's mentioned a couple mm -hmm. times. Yeah, there's a, a pair of translation patches for this. One is a faithful localization and the other is uh, changes the character names and a few other things to be more in line with Troubleshooter. And you start off this game as just one of the girls. Wait, but where's your pal? Well, let's play this level first. Okay. Also, you're getting a request to show off the uh, sound testing. Oh yeah, right. We gotta do that. Remind me to uh, reset afterwards. Of course. If anything, this is even more amped up than the original Troubleshooter. It starts off pretty slow because you only get one character, but oh my god. This game is fully sick. 100%. Okay, I like games that are sick. Yeah, Victo Kai is really good at making fake anime. They should have made real. Well, they were a media company. Was I watching Maruni play last night that she said was sick? Oh yeah, Garfield 2. <laughs> we gotta play more Garfield 2. I, I'm with you. I, I, I have a. <laughs> the, uh, on, on the Nintendo DS. It's a weird uh, 2.5D platformer. Oh, that game! I remember that game! Yeah. We, we do? We have to keep playing more of it? We do. Maroni okay. was very impressed. She didn't want to stop playing it. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, they made a sequel to Garfield. Oh, that's, uh, it's known as A Tale of Two Kitties in the United States. It's, it's just called Garfield 2 in the UK. The second Garfield. Things bleed when you kill them. I don't like that. You know this is the Genesis. All right, 
right, so check this out. I love the... That was cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, just Shadow Cell. And of course, it's even more difficult because you don't have another character to shoot behind you. Tough fight to start the game with, actually. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is this is gnarly, man. Mm -hmm. But I did it. And this is the biggest damn building in the whole world. It's huge, yeah. I do like the moon's reflection in the uh the window, that's cool. Yeah, that's cityscape down there. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's even doing uh, line scroll effects too. Yeah, I really like this series. Supposedly there was going to be a Battlemania 3 for Dreamcast. I want to live in that dimension where that came out. How do we uh, Mandela effect ourselves into it? <laughs> Is that something you opt into? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just, you know, you make a call, you... you... No, I want to be in the Baron Stein Bears universe, please. You have to get into the transfer program. Yeah. So right away, the game's just throwing these huge sprites, like giant bosses at you. It's super tough, leaving you wondering, God, I'm super over, super underpowered. How do I, how am I going to do this? Well, there you go. And the car hits him on the head. <laughs> yep. Yes. She jumps the car out of the 500th story of this massive building and lands on the boss. I love them. <laughs> You and me, we're basically the troubleshooters of Twitch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lonely hunters at heart. B minus. That was okay. You're pretty good. Anyway, in case you can't tell, this is an amazing game. You have to play this. Wait, w they're they're just hanging at home? Yeah, they're hanging at home eating curry. <laughs> Check out my swimsuit. Oh! Dragon, the sorry gator friend that she's going to the beach with. Mm -hmm. Let's at least see what level two looks like. Okay. And then we should see that sound test because that does sound good. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do that. It's the woods. And now you got your second character back, and the game basically starts here. What a cool game. Big recommend for this. Hugest recommend. Let's have a look at that sound chest. <laughs> sound test, not sound chest. Oh no! Ah, uh, Danny. You've what have been... I done? Danny has been revealed. They have been revealed as the anime pervert themselves. Uh, you're being asked to show the anti SNES Easter egg. Oh yeah! How do you do that? How do you do that? Oh, you're being banned, by the way. Good. I deserve it. Look at this. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! So, they show individual sound channels being played, you see. <laughs> Isn't that cool? This is so good! There you go, I had to even things out. Okay, fair enough. Anyone got that code, or should we Yeah, move on? anybody know the code to reveal that uh, Easter egg you were talking about? Yeah, there's an Easter egg to, that <laughs> shows them stomping on a Super Famicom or something. You can look that up on TCRF or something. Yeah. Let's play, let's play another game. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, so I mentioned that Vic Tokai had a habit of picking up games that other publishers didn't want to publish, releasing them over here. Much like their predecessor's renovation. And they did that with Columns 3, which, for whatever reason, Sega didn't want to publish over here in the States themselves. I always thought they did. No, they had to let Vic Tokai do it. And they gave it that weird cover art with Columns Man. You know who I'm talking about if you've seen it. You know what? Should I show chat Columns Man? Yeah, why not? Okay, hold on. Oh, yeah, and to do the thing, you press P2 uh, Start on Boot. That's how you uh, get the SNES. Uh... Oh, okay, I see. Okay, cool. We'll do that next time. Thank you for the info. Uh, this has a single-player campaign and also supports up to five players with the Genesis multi-tap. So if you want to play tiny columns with four other players, you can do it here. 
Columns in general is kind of a fucked up series. There's the original, which was on Arcade and Genesis. Uh, the sequel, Columns 2, was only in arcades and only recently got a home port on the Nintendo Switch. Then okay, you got so these oddities like stack columns. So I'm going to zoom in on this guy because I love Columns Man. Columns Man actually looks kind of like how I've been looking since I've been in quarantine. <laughs> is he that, does uh, though, right? Like, Is he goals? Honestly, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going bald. I will, I'll admit I'm, it's happening. And I think this is actually a good look. I think I could pull this off. I think you could too. I think I could be the big Tokai man. Dream big. Be the Victokai man. Now, I had original columns for Genesis, and I played it a lot. And then I had it on Sega CD, because one of the pack-ins was a compilation. Suffice to say, I played a lot of columns. I didn't own this one, though. And I don't think I ever even saw it for rent or anything. Yeah, we are getting the full columns man today. Okay, good. <laughs> yes! There we go. Now this game, it uh, kowtows to the fad of the competitive puzzler. A fad that's still ongoing as far as I know. I guess they looked at something like Puyo Puyo and they were like, why not? Just do that with columns. And that's what this is. Except unlike Puyo Puyo, you can charge up your attack. I think I have some attack saved up. And when you push the C button, it does that. Thank you for the suggestion, chat. I'm really glad you did that. I wish we had a second picture of that guy, like, crying or something for when I beat him. <laughs> What's the secret to columns? Diagonals? Is that what it is? I've never really fully mastered this game. I assume the secret is to be good at the game, which I am not. Yeah. Jeez. Oh jeez, we're getting towards the end of the match here. Ooh, here we go. Here we go. Fuck you, buddy. We're done. Take that, columns, man. Whoa, no! He's stronger than ever! What have I done? I've created a monster! Oh no! Stop! Reset the game! We gotta go! Okay, we're, okay. We're, okay, we gotta move on. Whew! Scary. <laughs> we're closing up with a few oddities, by which I mean these are two games which were actually dedicated to the European market, believe it or not. Vic Tokai, they had a they had a worldwide approach to these games. So while they were publishing games like, uh, say, Mansion of Hidden Souls and Flink on Sega CD, mm -hmm. they also brought out stuff like Top Gear 2. This one was released in the U.S. and also Europe. But this is not Japanese developed. It's from Gremlin and Kimco, presented by Vic Tokai. <laughs> wow. I'm so happy! What a, what a super team! Kimco, <laughs> Gremlin, and Vic Tokai. <laughs> my dream yeah so this is an Amiga port uh, the original Top Gear on Super Nintendo actually a really good game I like that I've never much played this one though we're gonna start off in Australasia that sounds made up we got no money but that's okay we got a car don't we yeah we can, we can make money with a car driving down the streets of Australasia the world is my oyster and this is what the game looks like. Eat dirt. dirt! Wow, are you just Jeez. a dickhead the whole time? I, I think so. So this looks alright. It goes at a pretty good clip. There's a decent sense of speed. You get to see a lot of the road, actually. Oh, I like that overpass effect. That looked nice. But I would say, compared to the Super Nintendo game, this really comes up short. Mostly because Top Gear for Super Nintendo had an amazing soundtrack. And can you hear the soundtrack to this game? That's right, there is none. I was gonna say, is <laughs> there is none. Kind of a shame. Kind of a missed opportunity. 
Uh, Bimo, thank you for showing me the ad with more uh, with more of uh, Vic Tokai Man here. I oh, yeah, him. there's additional images of him. I, love I bet him. there's one we could have used in a, a lose screen. That's... That's for next time. That really... How, so can I just take the cover of Columns 3 to the barber and go like, listen... <laughs> I want to look like this. Listen, I'm, I am I look hog. a little rat-like. I want to look Columns Man-like. Oh, God, I'm dead as hell. You're no, I'm really fine. dead, honey. I'm actually fine, actually. Oh, okay. Let her rip. Oh, boy, I'm dead again. I'm double dead out here on the road in Australasia. Double dead Danny, that's what they call you. <laughs> double D. Looks like your car has damage, so what do you say we, uh... Oh, man. It looks like damage is critical. I'm gonna try and crash. Okay. Uh, crash and burn! Down. Ouch. How are you not dead? Help, I forgot how to drive. All the cars are different here. You don't even have steering wheels. You have a flight yoke? What the hell? <laughs> Come on. Instead Let of pedals, Danny. you have a series of pulleys? Come on, Australia. Let Danny die. Let Danny die. Frappe is like fuming as they watch this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do not use pulleys, Danny. We use pedals like you. I guess I can't actually let the car blow up. That sucks. I'm actually shocked. Yeah, but what if I go really fast and... No, you can't. Damn. So it's technically okay. It's a racing game. <laughs> people, people put out racing games and people buy them. That's about all I can say about that. And this is one of them. Danny's it looks fine. commentary is that racing games exist. And they do. I'm not too big on racing games, personally. If it ain't Rad Racer, that's too complicated for me. I could do an outrun, too. We did it. Stunning finish. Beautiful. Good gaming, Danny. Thanks. You qualified. For what? This track's okay. You know what? That was the qualifying lap. Maybe they add in music on the actual race. Here's hoping. It better. Yeah, I do like the guy just named Greg's with the two Gs. Is that like a name of a store in... H.H. Uh... Greg's? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Alright. No, we still have no music. A shame. Well, we're just gonna drive off into the sunset of the Australasian Outback. You think any dingoes uh, leap into your path in this game? I... Yo, I dude! Think, I think we're gonna lose all our Australian viewership, which is... <laughs> Can't wait. I love you, Australians. Thank you. Thank you for saving it. Couple more games to go, and this one... Our next one is, in fact, a European exclusive. You can only get this on the European Mega Drive. And, in fact, you need an NTSC patch if you want to play this on U.S. Genesis hardware. Let's kick off three. European Challenge. Oh, that's dark. There's our boys. I love them. What if I got a Vic Tokai and a Jellico tattoo? Hmm. By Steve Screech! Yeah! <laughs> I'm screeching! What kind of languages we got here? We got Deutsch, we got Italiano, Espanola, mm -hmm. and English. Referee random? What does that mean? Oh, I see. I want a hard referee. Difficult. I want a real hard ass, someone who hates me. <laughs> Give me that hard ref uh, soccer. <laughs> I mean, footy. I've never played this game before, so let's see how this goes. Oh, Arsenal. I've seen a lot of people get mad at them lately. <laughs> they have, yeah. I don't know anything about soccer, but every so often I'll see one of the people I follow on Twitter being like, God damn it, Arsenal. We got one of those in Austin now. One of them Austin soccer teams. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they haven't played yet, but I hope that they have a good time. E. Seaman. Oh, you're, you're, that's, that's what it says. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there it is again. Okay. 
<laughs> that crowd looked cool. Yeah, the Austin FC. I don't know what FC st stands for. Famicom? Yeah, Famicom. Okay. Good, good music. Are, are we all just showing off before the game? We are. <laughs> I've never seen this before in a soccer game. <laughs> I like that the crowd noise is only in one of the, uh... It's a pre-game show-off. I got like right. this. I hope one of these guys kicks the ball out of the stadium and is like, there you go, now no one can play. Is that guy called Mr. McCoolder? Maybe. I hope so. <laughs> these chants. And introducing the other team. We got... Large, so small. small. I'd submerge, I agree. Sports teams should have to be animals, fantasy creatures, or nebulous concepts. Ooh, absolutely. So I think that uh, the Austin, Austin's football uh, team, our soccer team or whatever, they should be the Austin... Uh, Minotaurs. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Or the handsome horsemen. Ooh, okay. We need handsome horsemen. Holy crap, you go so fast in this game. No, slow down. You are a fast no. little fucking footballer in Look this. Look at your legs. <laughs> Look at the legs. They're so they're going out too far for bed of them. Slow down. See the Austin slimes. Listen, I like that. Did you hear that chant? Oh damn it. No, chant some more. I want to hear more. God damn it. I like the farty noise. Okay, apparently you can change the uh, speed in the settings. But... Oh, all right. I see. This may also be the result of the NTSC patch, but I hope it's really like this because it's very amusing. Okay, here we go. We're going to... Give me the... Give me the... No, don't kick it over there. Don't do that. I don't think I'm any good at soccer, y'all. I think it's antithetical to being Texan. You say that, but the Houston Dynamo is a pretty decent team. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have to be a certain kind of Texan. Mm. A soccer, a, uh, uh, a soccer Texan. Is this animal soccer world? No, that's a different animal soccer world. Wow. Thank you for showing me these animal soccers. He kicked it in this the crowd. This chanting? Here you go. Have a soccer ball. This chanting. Well, I've actually played a few soccer sims from the 16-bit era, and the thing I can tell you about them is that they're slow. Especially EA's uh, FIFA series, at least at the start. They sound like chanting monks. Also, I can tell you FIFA definitely didn't have chanting like this. Yeah, yeah. It's like throat singing. I really like it. <laughs> European footballer throat singing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> this chanting sounds like people flushing a bunch of toilets that flush in different tones. <laughs> what an amazing scene you just painted for me. I'm picturing like an orchestra, except it's a bunch of toilets. You can thank I'd submerge for that. That's all I'm thinking of now, too. It's really Oh, good. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Look at me flop around. No, I'm fine. I'm going to see the toilet orchestra at the Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> God damn it, I'm the worst. I'm literally the worst at soccer. Well, this is a nice surprise. For what it is, it's playable. It goes really fast. <laughs> wow. Oh. I love it. We better move on. This is my but, favorite soccer sim. But wow. Okay, so that amounts to all of Vic Tokai's actually released games in Japan, in the US, and in this case, in Europe. There is one final game we have to cover. It was unfortunately unreleased, but a prototype cartridge showed up many years ago. It was dumped, and now we're going to play it. 
I find it hard to believe that over the five years we've been doing this stream that we've never played Stone Protectors. Same! Same! If you don't know what this is, your mind is about to be blown. Just in time for Pride Month. Oh, this would have been another Kimco Vic Tokai Copro. We missed out. There's your sign of quality right there. Hmm, I'm out. There it is, Zok. The Crystal Palace of Merlin. Mithrandia. I see a bunch of... Okay. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't remember the Stone Protector's IP, it was, what if the troll dolls were hyper-masculinized? Mm -hmm. It was troll dolls for boys. Like, literally. They mm -hmm. had the same funky hair. They had little jewels inside their tummies. Only they're cool. They're the stone protectors. Mm -hmm. I think some of them could rollerblade. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This was actually released on Super Nintendo. So if you want a copy of this game, you can pick that up. But there was a Genesis version fully developed and ready to go until they shelved it. I can't believe this never came out. Me either. I think the Stone Protector series only went on for like one season or something. Or yeah. it was cancelled halfway through. It's, that's a very common thing to happen. Stone... You saw it happen with Bucky O'Hare and so on. Yeah, Stone Protectors was not a super popular uh, property at all. The, the boys, nobody bought it. Nobody really was like, I am all in on these Stone Protectors. Breaking in. So Pico Interactive owns this IP now, apparently. Oh man. Well, get ready to see more stone protectors. Alright, Lord Zock is uh, trying to get our cool crystal. Oh shit, the crystals are leaving. How come they made so many different troll games? Yeah, there was Super Troll Islands on Super Nintendo. Of course, mm -hmm. Stone Protectors. Mm -hmm. There was, there was Trolls in Crazy Land. Yeah, I was thinking Trolls in Crazy Land. <laughs> <laughs> trolls were really hot for like a period of almost nothing. It, mm -hmm. it had to have been less than a month. And yet they saw franchise material with this. Fly, fly free, find the Stone Protectors. God, this intro really good. Holy crap, that's some pixel art right there. Yeah! Jesus Christ. Why does this game look so fucking good? Chester, oh man, they're humans that got converted into trolls. I didn't know that. These guys look like <laughs> fucking nerds, I love them. This is just like Three Dirty Dwarves, only they're trolls. Yeah! Let's hear it for Ace Novelty and LCD. Yes, Ace Novelty. Wow. <laughs> you heard that? James Brown? Wow. <laughs> I feel good. And so do these trolls. Who are we going to be? Going to be Maxwell, Angus, Chester, Clifford, Cornelius? I mean, it's, it's Pride Month, so choose who you think would best fit. Does anyone know who uses the saxophone? Off the top of your head. I'm going to wait 15 seconds for an answer because this is important to me. <laughs> Which of the stone protectors uses the saxophone? Because that is the overpowered character from what I remember. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows this, and frankly, I don't blame you. <laughs> no, one, no one has dedicated to memory who C the stone protectors are. Center one or cent second from left? Yeah, it's one of these guys. I'm going to go with Chester. All right. I got to let the cat out again. Yeah. The storm stopped, so okay, she like, wants she wants back out. She's bored. Fair enough. But Tess, it's the stone protectors. Don't you like the stone protectors? This They're is your like... history. No, it's not like Bucky O'Hare. No, it's not like Biker Mice from Mars. No, it's not like Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. And this is not VR Troopers. You pitiful fools says Zink, or Zock, or whatever his name is. Zock. I'm ready. Guess what? It's a brawler. 
Cool. They're making nice awful noises. I will say, these characters, they definitely lend themselves to a beat-em-up. They are very muscular. These are characters you love to see tossing each other around like big sacks of beef. It's very, very beefy here, yeah. Who was it who I saw play this? Was it Macaw? It was Macaw, probably. Yeah, yeah, because he discovered that the saxophone guy was overpowered. I think there's command inputs for these moves, actually. Like, if you do a fireball, you, you do something. Yeah, you do that. A cool spin around kick. So what do you think? Do you like I, the stone protectors? I think they're gnarly little freaks. I do you like think that. they could be the next Ninja Turtles? Yeah! <laughs> wow! <laughs> what a cool guy. Yes, I think that the Ninja Turtles are done for, and all the team, all the boys are going to go ape shit for these freak trolls. And what I'm the... glad. Oh, go ahead. I'm glad Victokai did this because they're very much all about the freaks. Yeah. Only Victokai could have made this happen, mm -hmm. and they didn't. Just love tossing dudes. It just. Aren't the Ninja Turtles in trouble or something? <laughs> like, Viacom got sued for. for uh for something today. I saw it in the news, but I didn't actually okay, read it. hold on. Didn't Raphael kill a guy? No! <laughs> He's going to prison. Ninja Turtles trouble. Oh, this is gonna bring out horrible things. Ninja Turtles Viacom, maybe. Yeah, I guess it's gotta be Viacom. I could also be totally misremembering. Maybe I just want to see the turtles go down and serve time for their crimes. I think that's it. You know what? There's probably more to it, but it's it's just something I, I gotta dig to find. Yeah. It's fascinating. I'm probably right, though. Yeah, you are. So Vic Tokai did pretty much everything. They did shoot 'em ups they did brawlers, licensed games, uh, games from other publishers and studios that they didn't feel like releasing in the States themselves. I think we established before that Vic Tokai is the are you gonna finish that? Of video game publishers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't hate a game that has that in it. Okay, uh, apparently, uh, according, allegedly, an ex-vice president of Viacom says Viacom fired her for opposing its alleged plan to avoid paying taxes on licensing rights for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's oh, the story. okay. There That's you go. Fascinating. That's from a few years ago, though. So. It all goes back to the, lic the likeness and licensing rights. <laughs> probably not likeness. Do you think this guy's likeness is protected? It unfortunately probably is. We're probably, like, committing fraud by even showing his face. That well, guy, shit. you see how fast that guy just murdered you? Yeah, we got generated by Zinc. He can block. That's no fair. Can I block? Pile drive. That's good. That's as good as blocking. You've got a shit ton of moves in this game, actually. I sure do. Man, this would have been cool. Yeah, you can see how the Genesis color palette doesn't do this game any favors. It looks a little bit drab. It should be more colorful than it is. To which I say, if that's what you want, go play the Super Nintendo version. What I say is the, the stone protectors are just grungy enough to be worthy of the Genesis. They belong on the Genesis, the I, grunge console. I agree. They are gnarly. They're little. Again, it's the it's the little freak console. There's a lot more little freaks on this console than we see on the SNES. Let's hear it for the little freaks. Thank you. We got to decide us. which publisher was better for the little freaks of the world in the mid '90s. Well, I have my opinion, but I it's. Uh, Video Game King, I, I, I just mentioned that the SNES version did come out. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'll uh, speak yeah, that's, next time. That's the one you can uh, check out if you really feel like it. We did it. We beat level one. And we got an extra life. So, I'm going to play a little bit more of this, but in the meantime, I want you all to discuss which your favorite publisher is. Is it Treko or is it Victokai? And in fact, what I'm going to do right now is we're going to make it official. Okay. Oh shit, you got a poll? Yep, there's a poll. Vote. Whoever wins this poll is the ultimate victor in this battle. Can I vote in the poll? Yeah, sure. Okay. A lot to keep in mind. Treko had some pretty strange games that had a lot of character to them. They tried a bunch of shoot 'em ups. 
They tried uh, RPGs. And I would say the biggest point in their favor by far is War Song. <laughs> Because Vic Tokai did a lot good, but they did not release the first ever Langrisser game in the States. And you gotta admire Treko for doing that. Is that, that a flamethrower? Yeah. Sorry, I had to put it away to pull out my saxophone. <laughs> well, this is not... This is strengthening my opinion. Wow. Meanwhile, Vic Tokai had... They also had shooters, but Troubleshooter was one of them. And also the sequel, Battlemania Daiginjo. They also brought over things like, um, well, they wanted to bring over Stone Protectors. They had a couple of Euro-focused games with Top Gear 2 and Kickoff 3. And, of course, they had Mazing Saga Mutant Fighter, which is a pretty incredible game. But in the end, there can be only one. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Treko and their one extremely good release can match up to Vic Tokai's many great releases. I just love that saxophone move. Yeah, me too. So I'm going to give this one more minute before it's decided, but from what I saw of the results, it seems pretty one-sided. <laughs> I tried to make a case for both of them. And Treko ain't no slouch. After all, they did buy Sega many years later, so they had the last laugh. Man, for a Eurocom brawler, this is actually really good. You got a bunch of moves, you can pile drive, you got saxophone. Alright, post in the poll for the last time. Vote, vote, vote. This is it, we got 30 seconds to go. We gotta make this official. One company lives, the other one dies. Well, technically they both died many years ago. Mm -hmm. Rip. I have a hockey stick. I lost it. No. Okay, I'm giving this 10 more seconds, at which point it will be decided. The poll ends in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alex, hit reload one last time to confirm that Vic Tokai wins with 83% of the vote. It was a landslide. It wasn't even fair. <laughs> Treko, I admire him. And if nothing else, there is War Song. They got that. Mm -hmm. But Vic Tokai, they have the weirdness, they have the variety. They have the, the multi-regional reach that Treko just did not have. And in the end, I agree, they had the much stronger library on Sega Genesis. They really did. Good choice, everybody. You made the right decision. I want to beat Stone Protectors, but also this is the end of the stream and I have to stop playing. You do. But it's so cool. You can jump in pile drive and then ceremoniously play a saxophone afterwards to really hammer it home. <laughs> That would be really humiliating, right? If you got beaten up and a dude started playing a saxophone solo. <laughs> That'd be wretched. If that happened to me, I don't know what I'd fucking do. Also, you gotta quit pissing off the epic sax guy. <laughs> he does look like him, even with the hair and everything. Oh my god. Yeah. Maybe that was the inspiration. The hidden inspiration behind uh, epic sax guy. Look forward to my 30-minute YouTube video detailing this. Is it all just going to be uh, your... Are you going to research it, or are you just going to... Oh, no, I'll just piece together a bunch of other videos. Cool, cool. Can you use their footage, too? Yeah. Don't credit, though. Well, I like this jump. game. It's pretty incredible. And also, I like Vic Tokai. Great company. Gone too soon. What is that little guy? It's, it's Mr. Driller. You see? His name, Driller. Oh, my God. Little freaks everywhere. I love them. This stream is dedicated to all the freaks, the little freaks, and the freaks that love the freaks. Thank you. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks to the competitors for Street Smart. <laughs> yeah, no wonder that Treko didn't win this one with games like Street Smart and Sorcerer's Kingdom. <laughs> it, was a, it was a charismatic lineup and a good try, but mm -hmm. in the end, Vic Tokai, they had everything. You can't compete against that. They had Go Nagai. They had the Stone Protectors. They had the Troubleshooters. Crystal and Madison. Both of them. How can you compete against both two Troubleshooters? Not just one, but two. You just can't. But in the end, I'm glad we settled this. The question on everyone's lips. The, the question that got thousands of retweets on Twitter. Mm -hmm. We know now. Vic Tokai, superior to Treko. Thank you for helping us decide that. Thank you. Alex, I'm going to look for a raid target. Why don't you tell the folks about our Patreon? 
Yeah, sure. We do have a Patreon, everybody. It's at uh, patreon.com slash RetroPals. If you pitch in at least $5 a month, you get to vote on what we play every Wednesday. This week, you picked uh, Vic Tokai Trico, Treco, so thank you very much for that. I do appreciate that. Um, we also have, if you'd like to support us through getting uh, cool-ass merch, we have our Pride store is now open this year. We didn't do it last year, but we're doing it this year. Um, we will only be selling this design uh, through this store for this month. Uh, so do pick uh, and something up if you'd like to support us that way. We have a lot of really cool designs uh, and a lot of flags. I worked really hard on this one, so do check that out if you'd like. Uh, let me just post it one more time. So many flags. No matter who you are, your flag is in there. I guarantee it. Yeah, and if you, if you need an extra one, let me know. I can try to I can try to get one in there. But thank you all so very much for your support, either through our Patreon, through direct donations, through uh, Twitch subs. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. We are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash RetroPals. Uh, we post highlights of our streams there. Um, we're going through, uh, did, did, did that video ever go up or we're still uh, working No, I'm on waiting until next week okay. on that. We had a video that had multiple copyright claims and I'm trying to scrub those out as we speak. Yeah, so uh, we're working on it, but we should that should be up coming up this week or next week. So do check that out if you'd like to see our uh, highlights of our streams. Oh my God, did the new Asha and Monster World actually come out? Did that just... It completely slipped under my radar. Apparently it's out, and our friend Kate Libsey is playing it right now. It is a remake of Monster World 4 on Mega Drive, so we're continuing the whole uh, Genesis slash Mega Drive theme we got going here. Hope it's good. It's uh, like Art Dink developed it, apparently, of all people. Wow. What the hell? I, I really hope this is it, it's good. It, lo it looks pretty good. But uh, go enjoy this video i'm typing in the words right now let's let's start the raid okay and by video i mean twitch channel okay <laughs> yeah have fun have a good evening thanks for watching we'll see you later see ya folks